Hey everybody, this is Evan Abrams and today in After Effects, as part of Lo-Fi July, we are going to be doing some color grading and color correcting in Adobe After Effects. We are duplicating the washed out and film burnt nonsense that you often see output from Instagram, and we're just going to be doing it for video. Though I'm told Instagram has a video app, which is kind of like the Vine app, which are both kind of bad. You know what? It's all good. Whatever helps you effectively share pictures of your shoes, pets, and food. Anyway, I'm Evan Abrams. Let's open up After Effects and make some mediocre footage slightly better. So the first thing we're going to do in After Effects is get some footage. It can come from anywhere. You can bring it in from Premiere, you can bring it in from your camera, you can go download it off the internet, but I'm just going to import a file real quick and we'll make use of the file that I used in the intro. So I'm just going to bring that here onto the new comp button and make a new comp. Now, what I want you to remember is that all the techniques I'm going to use are applicable in other applications. So we have similar effects that we can use in Premiere, we have similar techniques that we can apply in speed grade, and there's definitely a lot of crossover. So the first thing to do is to create a new adjustment layer. Methodologically speaking, well, that's a big word, but anyway, we want to have the effects on an adjustment layer and not on the original footage. This is because then we're able to use the opacity of that layer to determine how much it's affecting the layers below it. And we're going to create other layers that are going to go on top and interact below and stuff like that. And we want to keep everything sort of separate. But for now, I'm going to call this CG for color grading. So what we're doing right now is color grading. We're not correcting the color because I think this looks fine. It was shot in sunlight and, you know, this is, it looks like what I look like. So it's pretty correct. You know, I do have really terrible skin, so this is fine. So we're going to be applying all of our color grading to another layer. So the first thing we're going to do is what's called a cross process. In the lo-fi aesthetic, cross process is often used to show that the footage has been somehow treated by chemicals and maybe it didn't work out or there are varying inconsistencies in this process, but the idea is we're going to be basically pretending like we took one kind of film, say a Kodak film, and then we treated it without authentic Kodak chemicals. So the first thing we're going to do is apply a tint. So what tint does is it desaturates things. It reduces the black and white to just black and just white. So it takes all the color out of things. And the amount is how much it's doing that. So we'll start off with a pre-tint of 25, and then we're going to apply a curves to this thing and the curves is where the cross process comes from and you can remember how to do cross process because it's going to take two curves and cross them so here's what I mean in red we're going to put up the start put down the end all right and then say in blue we're gonna put down the start and put up the end so what this will do is it's creating two curves that run in opposition to each other. So the blues are going to be dominating one channel and the reds another. If we match the curve though, the matching of the curve is going to basically cause this to look like we're just adjusting the main RGB line. So what we want to do is make sure that the lines are not the same. Bend this like so, and then we take the green and we can do, you know, whatever with the green but you get the idea that what it's doing is it's taking the colors and it's skewing them so they are no longer totally natural. So now the next thing to do is apply to this another tint, what we call the post tint, just in case there are some things that are a little bit too extreme for our liking, but as you can see, 25 on the top, 25 on the bottom, and a little cross process in the middle, and we are all good. And then we can use the RGB here to make it darker or slightly lighter as needed. But I think this looks about like what we would want to be exporting from our terrible Instagram filter. So that's cross-processing and desaturating. The idea is that we want to make this sandwich, and you can use this sandwich technique in pretty much anything. You can use adjustment layers in Premiere to do this, tint curves tint, you can do this in speed grade, you can do this in Final Cut, you can do it in all sorts of programs. So this is a thing that you can use anywhere and wherever you like to do it. And you can use this to create all kinds of looks. So here, I'm just gonna reset the curve and I'm gonna do something like this. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna crush the blacks, so I'm gonna put that up, I'm gonna make it actually more desaturated on the out, and then I'm gonna do something like uh, take the blue away a little bit and take the red, skew that just slightly. 
And then we're going to take the green and give some green. And then before you know it, I'm practically in the movie Band of Brothers. So it's not really that hard. And there are some other tricks that you can throw in here too, like something that's called a tritone. We like to drop the tritone on things because it creates a sepia tone out of them. So it can be quite useful. And in this case, the blend with original is sort of reversed, but you get the idea. But, you know, you can take this and... You can apply a green in here or whatever color you want, but the tritone is good too. So let me just reset our curves here and we'll get rid of the tritone and we'll go back to something that's closer to the Instagram look. So we've got this set up in the kind of color grading we want, but there's a little bit more that we can do. You can even add, say, a new solid on top of this and we use this solid to apply a gradient to the stuff below it. So. Go ahead and throw in the ramp, which is now called the gradient ramp for ease of finding. And then we'll just set one up here, and then we'll set the other down here, creating a diagonal. Or you can do it horizontal or vertical or whatever, I don't really care, I'm just doing this to show you. And we're going to set one of them to red, and we're going to set the other one to yellow. Nice and bright, nice bright colors, big bright colors, and change the mode to add. Pfft, look at that, that is pretty burned out. So we're making what we call a film burn. And now you can use things like add and lighten and screen to wash this out with this gradient color. So it's going to apply a gradient across the frame, much in the same way that a gradiated gel would, or some kind of horrible lighting accident. And you're able to use these values to wash out and bleach out the stuff below with gradients, which is pretty radical, if I might say so. And it doesn't have to be a linear, it can be a radial, so if you want to do that, that's totally your prerogative. That's always always fun to do. But uh, this is what we did in the example. So we applied a radial gradient, and then we put a glow on it, which will take hot spots and glow them out. So let's just put that add up to 100 here, and we'll change color A and color B to both be white, and instead of original colors, it's going to glow AB colors, so it creates this bright flash here in the corner, and then by changing this value here, that flash absorbs more or less of the image, so you can do something that burns out the entire image by adjusting the glow threshold. Something else to consider is instead of using a gradient ramp, why don't you use something more like a four color gradient? Why would you use one instead of the other? Well, this one gives you four colors to control. So let's make two of them yellow, and let's make another two of them red, like so. So we now have basically two hot spots to play with, and we can create these blobulous sort of burning, you know, patches going on, and uh, that's pretty good. I'm pretty okay with that. Something you might want to consider as well is taking these points and applying a wiggle to them, something like wiggle 10 times a second, 1080, so these things are really going all over the place. So it looks kind of like they might be burns that are coming through. Now the word film burn comes from actually the film heating up and burning and the chemical process of what that looks like. So if you have a look there, it is kind of like my film is on fire. And then you can apply other things like jogging the footage around, but just for the color correcting and grading part, this is how you apply gradients over top to create gradiated effects across your frame. So this is a pretty good way to apply some visual interest to your work, if it's otherwise boring. But you don't want to overdo it, you know? This is the kind of thing where subtlety is really your friend. Using, you know, the tint and the curves and the tritone and just using that fine control to get in there and altering the colors. All in, the bulk of the work, and I'm just saying the bulk of the work I do, only requires these three. Tint curves tint, the tint sandwich, and uh, that pretty much gets it done. But remember, you can't color grade away shitty footage. If you're bringing poop in, you're going to be bringing poop out. So for example, if there's not enough detail because I overexposed or underexposed, there isn't any detail to lose when I start mucking around with the contrast. So no amount of tinting and curves work is going to save footage that doesn't have enough detail information in it. 
So just remember to white balance your camera off the get-go and tweak your settings on the camera like I say in this week's vlog. So check that out and enjoy. Hopefully you've learned a thing or two about color correcting and washing things out to have that lo-fi look that you've always wanted. If you're already taking pictures of your shoes and pets and food using Instagram, then I guess this is the natural segue for you to take pictures of woodworking and upholstery and video of your friends growing mustaches. Anyway, I'm Evan Abrams. This has been How to Color Grade Like Lo-Fi, and uh, hopefully it's been good for you. There are new tutorials every week. We're currently in Lo-Fi July, so every tutorial is going to have a little lo-fi bent to it. And uh, stop by evanabrams.com if you want to download project files. If you want to download this project file, it'll be there. And if you would like to uh, just talk about After Effects and motion graphics, then hit me up on Twitter and Facebook. And if you're into After Effects and motion graphics, you should definitely subscribe to this channel because there's new stuff here every week at the rate of about two videos a week. And it's pretty good stuff, I'm told. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching. Again, I'm Evan Abrams, and I will see you next time. Unless you didn't subscribe, in which case, you know, have a good one, and uh, I'll see you when I see you. But uh, for the rest of you, see you next week for more good stuff. Thanks a lot, and have a nice day.